Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Happy Sunday and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, weekend up the show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is trading well. Hope everybody is healthy uh, and happy and enjoying uh, your uh, summer, right? Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, again, all we ask is just be so kind. Uh, click that like button. It takes literally a second. Show support for the channel and we'll continue to Try to get you to the point of belief that reality is based on the market you have, not the market you want. So where are you, right? If you've been watching this video, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast for the last two weeks, even if you just started literally the last two weeks, um, there was a big event, right? A big event. The market just didn't break down on Friday. Uh, there was a big event that occurred. We lost uh, the 50-day moving average on July the 24th. And um, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while or in the last two weeks, um, I'm not sure I could have been more emphatic of what was about to happen. Uh, a lot of people turned around, especially newer traders, newer investors, and said, yeah, whatever, buy the dip, bro. Okay, cool. So here we are. Uh, three weeks ago, we lost 3.6% on the NASDAQ. Last week, we lost 2.2% on the NASDAQ. And this following week, we lost another 3.4%. So you're talking about 9.2, 9.3% decline in uh, the NASDAQ 100. That's kind of a big deal, right? It really is a big deal. Um, you know, if you listen to the warnings, if you, and again, not just by me, just for, from technical analysis, again, it, even if you were watching this broadcast or not watching this broadcast, you know, everything would have played out. Um, but the point is, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I'm talking about a quarter of a century. Um, I've went through this game so many times. Um, I know the dynamics, and you can just see here from from your your naked eye. Um, on May May the third, we reclaimed uh, the 50 day moving average, and the queues went from 436 uh, all the way to 503. On January, excuse me, on July the 24th, we lost the 50 day moving average, and the queues. Uh, went from you know 474 and we're at 444 right 444 uh just two weeks later so the 50 day is real so if you if if this is something that you got caught off guard uh or you um participated in whether the sell side or the short side or just preservation of capital if that was your case learn from this right life in general is is a is a learning experience I learned about this the hard way you know, two decades ago, right? You don't buy stock below the 50-day. Um, you don't buy dips below the 50-day. You don't buy into strength in the 50-day, right? So it's a it's a very valuable learning lesson. So again, I've been harping on this point for a long time. Just put it right in front of you for the, for the rest of your trading career. Above the 50-day is bullish. You buy dips. Below the 50-day is a sell signal. You sell into rallies. And again, if you've been watching just kind of the price action. We've literally had one day that we closed higher than the open. Literally one day in the last three weeks. That's a big, big deal. Uh, and now that the damage is done, whether you capitalized it or not, or even saved yourself some money uh, on the long side, whatever the case may be, the past is the past. We, we can't, we we can't uh, do anything about it, right? What's done is done. If you're an investor and you watched your portfolio bleed. Uh, again, it's over. You you can't. You, there's nothing you can do. You can't. You know, click your heels and go back to uh, you know go back to two weeks ago to kind of rewrite history. So the question is, what happens next? Uh, number one, some developments. Right, developments. Uh, Iran is talking about potentially attacking Israel. Israel is obviously going to sit there and not going to uh, just sit there quietly. They're going to retaliate back. That is it's kind of the the, the, the whirlwinds uh, going on this weekend. You had your FOMC meeting, not really too many surprises. They left rates alone. Some Fed governors were, were wanting 
uh, rate cut before the election. If you guys remember, about a month ago, Trump came out and said, nah, you're not cutting anything before the election. Relax. Slowly roll, son. Right? Um, they did leave the door open for a potential rate cut in September. I don't see that happening. Um, most important part is the volatility. And, and, and this is kind of how I want to you know, kind of lead with what I think the way to proceed for next week, especially if you're a novice trader or a novice investor in a, in a bull market, right? Traditionally, in a bull market, you have a lot of volume, you have a lot of liquidity because there's more market participants. It's, it's a fact, right? When the market's going higher, everybody from newsstand workers to waitresses to crypto bros to finance bros to bros bros, right? Everybody's in the market. Everybody's chasing. Everybody's loving it. We're going to the moon and diamond hands and all that stuff. When you're getting technical damage, what's going to happen, right? You're going to have a lot less market participants because the majority of people out there, they're not traders. They're holders, right? You buy and hold. That's what an investor is. You're not a trader. So, you know, it's it's a very, very fair thing to, to turn around and go, the word trader it's a very loose word, right? In a bull market, everybody's a trader. In a bear market, well, majority of people, 99% of the people, they're holders because they, again, they don't trade on both sides of the market. So the problem is when you have technical damage and people are just not participating, you're going to have a lot more volatility, okay? You have wider spreads, you can have bigger, more exaggerated, uh, average true range, but the one constant, right? The one constant, well, the two constants, but the one big constant you could, you're going to have is your process, right? I trade channels, okay? I couldn't care less if the market's going up or down. As long as it's a viable channel, as long as there's a point of reference, I am going to participate, right? Uh, and this has been a great two weeks. It's been a really, really excellent two weeks. If you're a trader, if you're a holder, not so much. And one other constant is you're going to have consistency in the algorithm game. So if you thought they were crazy before, especially to the upside, where there was much more volume, much more liquidity, many more market participants, well, they're going to go crazy to the downside. And this is why you're seeing such exaggerated moves to the downside. That's why you know, you're not seeing just $2 candles on Tesla. You're seeing $6 candles on Tesla now. It's not like you're seeing now with all this liquidity on NVIDIA, you know, $1.50, $2. They're going down four or $5 at a time. You know, SMCI is going down like $50, $60 at a time. And just because there is no lack of participation, does that change this week? We'll see. We'll see. Um, I think the mentality, right? The mentality uh, for the average investor this week is, Figure out exactly how do you want to protect your book, right? Your inventory, your positions. Um, if you've been watching me, uh, especially, you know, if you've been watching me uh, for years, uh, every single time we get down below the 50-day moving average, and I'm, again, I'm not going to go through a whole big discussion again. If and Maybe Kenyon will put in the link. I've, I've done many numerous videos about how to hedge your positions uh, when stocks are below supply. If you are uh, a member of Access a Trader, there's plenty, you know, we talk about this nonstop during the, you know, honestly, I think everybody's just trading for the short side right now. There's not many people sitting there with positions. Um, but we have we have plenty of resources to show you how to hedge, right? How to hedge against uh, a sell cycle. And the problem is we don't know, right? We don't know as per market participants, I don't want to call us bulls, bears, or indifferent, but we don't know as market participants, how long is this going to last, Right. We went through a major, major earning cycle this week, right? We saw Amazon get massacred. Uh, we saw, you know, we saw AMD get hit again, right? We saw Nvidia holding on to dear life. Okay, the, you know, a lot of chatter came out. Elliott Management, uh, which I don't agree with, but Elliott Management had a note on Friday telling their investors. This is an AI bubble. I disagree. Okay, I disagree with that. Uh, but this is now the poorest kept secret in the technical trading world. Nvidia loses a hundred. It's a wrap, right? I don't care. Again, I know they're coming out with earnings on uh, the twenty eighth. Let me look. They've held a hundred now two out of the last four days, right? Including the after hour lows on uh, July the thirtieth. So as much as I think Nvidia probably will have a good quarter, I don't know how the stock is going to react in the quarter. But 
if it loses the bottom channel here, I'm a seller. Not only a seller, I'm a seller of both hands. Um, and this is kind of the, the, the hardest part right now because there's so many stocks that have gotten so big moves, already t- so much big technical damage, just like a bull market that gets overbought. And you hear me talking about all this all the time. Don't chase stocks that are up 20, 30% uh, from the breakout. Our biggest challenge this week is finding names that are not down 20, 30, 40% to the downside in the last couple of weeks. Because again, the further you go from the pivot, the higher probability the market is going to snap back. So we don't know as market participants, how long is this going to last? Is this going to be a scenario that we're below the 50-day moving average for another two, three days? Is NVIDIA going to come in like a white knight, like Apple should have on Friday? And guess what? Apple, you know, really didn't. Okay, Apple really didn't. Uh, NASDAQ got absolutely murdered. The Dow, at one point, it was out down like 900 points. Um, you know, and like Apple, despite their quarter, yeah, I'm watching it this week to the downside, right? I couldn't care less about the upside. I don't want to buy stocks to the upside. I don't care about stocks to the upside. Remember, in a sell cycle, you're not looking for the one stock that stood out, right? Apple was green on a Friday. It stood out. You're looking for the stocks that are not, right? You're looking for the names that are not. There's a 10,000 names that are not standing out. Why are you trying so hard to identify the one stock that is? And the one thing is, when people try to identify the one stock it is, and the stock doesn't price appreciate because, again, we're in a sell cycle, eventually sellers will eventually sellers will take over. Buyers will give up. And this is why, if you look at Apple, Apple strong, Apple strong, Apple strong, Apple strong, Apple strong, until it gives up literally $5 uh, in the last hour and a half. So, you know, if you're not going to trade, right, if you don't have a process to trade this market, I get it. I get it. I get it. Not everybody needs to be a trader. Not everybody needs to be an active market participant. Uh, if you're an investor, uh, best thing I can tell you is short some spies against your portfolio. Short some cues, depending on you know, what you, where you are. Uh, even the last group, right, the IWM, you know, we talked about this on Thursday's video, the IWM engulfed three weeks worth of buying. That's a major sell signal. Like nobody in their right mind Thursday night go, yeah, I still like the IWM. Engulfed three weeks of buying on one candle. These are major, major selling points. Now again, I don't know what's going to happen this week. Do I think, do I still think we go lower? Yeah. I mean, that's what the data is telling us. You know, it's telling us we're going lower, right? We talked about uh, Thursday's video, you know, this 454 gets you know taken down, we're going to go down to the 445 level. Look where the market went down. It went down to the 445 level. This 444, this 444 line in the sand, again, there's the consecutive lines in the sand because this is where the market continues to trade orderly. Stocks go from demand to demand to demand to demand, right? You see how it stopped here? This is why these unnecessary squiggly lines why do you have so many lines, bro? Because they tell me where the market's going to stop, where 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 price demand is going to come in, where price supply is going to come in. So here's your point of reference going into this week. Can you start losing 444? We're going to go down all the way down to 434, right? Is it possible we get a dead cat bounce Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? It, it has to play that way. Again, the market doesn't go straight up uh, in a buy scenario. The market sure as hell doesn't go down. Uh, straight down in the sell scenario. Yes, you're, uh, one day this week, you are going to see the market up, you know, the NASDAQ of four or 500 points. That's the way a bear scenario, a sell cycle works. But ultimately, on those days, right, on those days that the market is going contra, right, contra to the sentiment, con- contra to uh, the directional bias, those days, I'll be very light. So a day that the market's of three, 400 points, yeah, I'll scalp a couple of things here and there to the upside. But I couldn't care less. I really couldn't care less because I understand this is just a knee-jerk reaction. The same way I understand in a bull market, when the market goes up you know, nine out of 10 days on the 10th day, I'm not shorting the market. I'm just kind of just sitting there just watching uh, for, the, for, the, for the upside to resume again. So that's exactly uh, what, what I'm waiting for this week. Uh, again, let's look at some names uh, Tesla, you know, we talked about this thing on Thursday. Guys, watch the earnings low. Guys, watch the earnings lows. Guys, watch the earnings low. What do you think happened on Thursday, on Friday, right? We caught a great pivot from the 14 area, traded all the way down to uh, the 206, barely held on to the 50-day moving average. Guys, 
Watch Tesla, right? This is one of those names. Tesla, NVIDIA hasn't really imploded yet. Okay, it really hasn't. They're still above supply. Now, what happens if Tesla starts losing the bottom of the channel here? Right? That's that's I'm I'm there for all the smoke, right? I love Tesla. I'm there for all the smoke. So it lost the earnings lows. They came out with some China numbers pre-market. And the first thing I said in the morning strategy was I can't believe these people were buying the stock on a gap up <laughs> into in, into a, into a bear spin cycle. And obviously the stock lost its range. Guys, watch the Tesla this week. Loses the 50-day moving average. It's going to get hit. Again, keep an eye on NVIDIA. It's holding on to dear life. This thing, any close below 100, this thing's going to see 95 uh, again, I, I think also their business model is great. I think they'll probably come out with great earnings uh, on the 28th, I believe. But from the point of taking control of an interval, you know, the video loses 100 this week. Uh, we should get hit. Uh, look at a name like CRM, right? CRM barely holding on to this bottom channel here, right? Watch this thing. This thing confirms uh, Friday's channel on Monday. Uh, this thing's going to get hit. Um, I'm watching for a potential reversal on Apple this week. I get it. They had great earnings. Well, I don't even know if they had great earnings. Uh, but the point is they sold off earnings only up a dollar fifty in the day. Again, it might never happen, but the whole point is being prepared. I'm going to watch uh, the bottom range here of July lows uh, for a trade to the downside. I still think AMD uh, has more room to the downside. The stock has just been just a train, absolute train wreck. I'm going to watch the lows uh, from Thursday for a potential next move down. Uh, let me see what else we're talking about. Let me see what else I want to talk about. Uh, da, da, da. I mean, there's a million stocks, guys. There's really a million stocks. Um, my focus is the NASDAQ 100, but you can basically look for anything. Intel, talk about back to the future, right? In, when I started trading, Intel was in the 20s. This is 99, right? In 1998, 99, 2000. Guys, look where we are. <laughs> we're back. We're back in the time. We're back to the 21 area. Uh, the stock is a train wreck. Watch this thing this week for a resumption of selling below Friday's lows. Um, you know, just again, it's meet dead money there. Uh, and again, just go through your charts. You know, go through your charts. You're going to see a lot of names just look horrible, just absolutely horrible. Uh, do not shorten the hole. And what I mean by that is, uh, again, I don't know how the market's going to react. We have to see the futures Sunday night. But if the mar market opens up down two, 300 points, the last thing you want to do is short the open. You're, you're, you're going to get run over. They're going to spike it right back. You want to see the stocks on any sell cycle. You want to see a stock put in the opening range low, let it, let it rally back. And when it comes back in and takes out an opening range low, regardless of what your timeline is, that is a confirmation on opening range price. Because the last thing you want to see is the NASDAQ opened out down two, 300 points. You're shorting, you know, you're shorting pre-market or you're shorting at the open and the market goes red to green. It happens all the time, right? It, you know, honestly, I wouldn't even mind, you know, I wouldn't even mind the day that if we open up down two, 300 points on Monday, and again, I'm speculating, for us to go red to green. If we go red to green, we will have a, an aggressive rally. Remember what I said a couple of minutes ago? We should have at some point this week a four or 500 point rally on the NASDAQ 100, but the theme continues to be sell the rallies. Guys, have a great uh, remainder of your Sunday. God bless. If you're interested in pivots, guys, again, all you need to do is come sit with me for 30 days, see the process in action. Uh, it's pretty neat. Nobody else on the planet trades this uh, but us. And the most important part is you'll have an incredible different view from the normal that you see, uh, especially on social media. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you all in the field on Monday.